Welcome to Historic Insights. Today's date, December 28, 2007. Back on September 19, 1991, in the, uh, outside of a town of uh, Balsano, uh, Italy, up in the Northern Alps, uh, Helmut and Erica Simon, a couple that were hiking in that area, uh, decided to take a detour from their usual hiking route, take a shortcut. And in that shortcut, as they were hiking back to their, uh, their home, they discovered a, a body, uh, thinking that it might have been a hiker who had died as a result of either an accident or foul play. They took a picture of the body and uh, reported it to the local police. Uh, this is the story of Bootsy, the Iceman. Uh, as it turned out, investigations proved that it was not a, a hiker or contemporary man, but a man from approximately 3000 BC who was a, uh, gave a, a wealth of information in terms of what the culture was like, what the society was like back in those days. Uh, today's guest is Stephen Shankleport. Stephen has actually visited the site as part of uh, his research and he's going to bring with him the knowledge that he was able to, uh, to, to, to gain from his uh, uh, studies of this uh, matter. Welcome, Stephen. Thank oh, you thank for coming. You. Uh, for me. After the, they found this body, what was the next step? They, they contacted the authorities, and what happened after that? Right. Uh, after they contacted the authorities, uh, they basically referred the, the matter to the uh, Austrian police, the Gendarm, who uh, assigned a gentleman, Anton Kohler, to recover the body. Uh, now, Kohler had some uh, information and some uh, knowledge regarding um, basic practices in the area. And what Kohler found uh, was significant was a copper axe. And this uh, gave him a clear indication that this uh, man was not a contemporary man. He was not from the, our age, but rather he was at least, Kohler predicted, at least a thousand years old. Now, Kohler was wrong in this matter. He was not a thousand years old. He was, in fact, five thousand years old. Carbon dating places the man between 3,500 BC to 3,100 BC which would make him a Neolithic man uh, from the uh, Eneolithic period, which is, uh, that is to say, the Copper Age. Um, the m body was found in a ditch over a, um, facing over a stone rock. Uh, the hand, the left hand is over the, over the neck in this manner, with the right hand extended outward. Now this would convey the meaning that this man had died of exhaustion, uh, and which we will find is in fact true. Uh, CAT scans done in 2001 find that the man had a, um, a uh, arrowhead lodged in his left shoulder blade and he had probably died from uh, blood loss uh, clumped over from extreme exhaustion from this blood loss and fell on, upon this rock. Okay. Okay. Basically when um, they reported the, uh, the, the body to the local authorities, uh, local investigators uh, attempted to extricate the body from the ice. It was actually in ice and, and that preserved the body, mummified the body. Um, it took a lot of attempts. I think it was three or four attempts to... Yes, to, yes. Can you describe right. what, what went into t uh, 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 releasing that body from that ice? Sure. And uh, what, was there was uh, any kind of damage done to the, uh, to, the, to the evidence or to the actual body itself? Sure. Well, unfortunately, the uh, excavation attempts were made in a rather slipshod manner. Um, a compressed air uh, hammer was used uh, to uh, extricate the body and during uh, the process of uh, extrication uh, the left hip of the Iceman was uh, severely damaged so okay. the left side of the body. Once they were able to extricate the body then they wanted to maintain it in that uh, well-preserved state so they had to actually keep it uh, I believe uh, a sub-freezing or uh, close to freezing to keep the uh, the body uh, preserved? It was the um, scientists decided to keep the body in the exact same conditions of a, of a glacier, that is to say 100% um, humidity. Uh, they actually, um, there were some debates over what percent humidity should uh, be used. Uh, it varied between 90 to 96%. And as it was being changed, this allowed for a growth of fungus uh, to occur. The body was eventually wiped clean of this fungus and is now kept in a, um, in a refrigerator, uh, which is um, 
supported by two uh, power generators in the case of power failure. Uh, this kept it as a, exactly the same conditions as would have been present in a, the, uh, the manner it was found. Now, the interesting thing was that the body was uh, discovered on the 19th of September, 1991. And on uh, September 23rd, 1991, the body actually was uh, removed. While it was being removed, they had a film crew locally that took uh, actual uh, film footage of uh, the body uh, of being removed, transported, and uh, refrigerated to, to, uh, um, uh, to prevent any uh, kind of uh, decomposition. The amazing thing about this discovery was the condition of the body. The mummification process happened in a natural way. Uh, I know there's a lot of theories about that. Could you just uh, go over some uh, theories as to how this body from uh, over uh, uh, 5,000 years ago was uh, preserved so well? Sure. Well, recent scholarship has revealed that the Iceman was up in the, uh, the location where he was found uh, in early spring. This would mean that there was already snow in the area. So it's conceivable that he fell upon the snow and snow covered up the body, eventually freezing it. Uh, and this theory is obviously supported by the fact that there is a lack of uh, damage to the body, a lack of the presence of any uh, predators. Uh, there is, the, when the body was first found uh, by uh, the Simons and then later um, shown to Marcus Pierpalmer, uh, there, who was um, head of a lodge over there, and he later referred the matter to the police, uh, the first thing that was found was that there was damage to the head. Uh, but this is not any, it's not any exterior damage, and it was probably not um, done as a result of predators, but rather from the blow um, to the head as he fell from blood loss from his wound. Okay, and now an another interesting thing that they, they must have was, uh, was seeing the actual um, clothing that this uh, uh, individual had. He had a, uh, a hat that was made out of uh, bear skin. He had shoes which were, were made with uh, uh, different types of hides. He had leggings which were he looked like a contemporary man because they're basically pants without the uh, the waist part. Um, could you describe what what they first found in terms of equipment, um, um, daggers, bows and arrows, etc.? What was on him? Uh, his clothing. Give us a description of what what his the tools that were found on the uh, the person uh, that they discovered. Sure. Well, uh, to describe uh, the clothing, uh, you make a good point. The clothing is very similar. And it's actually, um, it was used to uh, give him the m maximum means of mobility. Uh, it was also used to obviously keep out the cold. Um, what he wore, he had a, a loincloth, which would cover him. Uh, he also had a um, belt, a, uh, a sort of uh, prehistoric fanny pack, which would he, would, he would keep the uh, majority of his uh, tools in there. Um, he had uh, a pair, two pairs of, um, I'm sorry, a pair of uh, grass insulated shoes uh, which were kept together by netting and placed with grass insulation. Uh, one of these shoes was made directly designed to fit the foot whereas the other one is uh, similar to our modern shoes in that it used the, the use of ties. Now my theory is uh, as uh, investigations have revealed the man suffered from uh, frostbite on his left foot and obviously he would want to keep the least amount of pressure as he's going through these cold times, these cold temperatures, because it was reoccurring frostbite. So with these shoelaces, he would be able to affect the temperature. Uh, the leggings, as you mentioned, are very, um, very modern. Uh, there would be a, a bare skin a tongue, which he would place into his shoes to keep cold snow out and keep it very warm. Um, he also had a, a shirt, which was made from deer hide, and that was armless, um, sleeveless rather, uh, to allow him full use of his arms. Um, above that, he would wear a, a grass cloak. Uh, now, it's debatable whether this cloak was used either, it's probably served multiple functions. It could have been used as a cloak, and it would have used, uh, been to keep him warm, and used also to protect him from water. Um, now, the cloak is plated with grass at a, between two to three centimeters. Uh, so, but yet, on every location except the lower part, which would give him full use of his legs and would not hinder him. Um, but the cloak could have also served as a grass mat from which he would sleep on, and it could have also served uh, to hold his, um, his book bag. He had actually had a, a type of bag 
which he was placed on his back. It could have been the covering for that. And scientists are not yet sure.